we actually have a watering hole that existed here about 33 million years ago. And uh, many of the animals would die in this area, leaving their carcasses behind. And that's where we see a lot of the skeletons. At the Wheaton College Science Station in the Black Hills of South Dakota, the shock of the new has started more than one student on his or her way to an understanding of evolutionary history. You said the age of the site was around 30 million years old. How did you come to that uh, age? Like, through what processes did you decide on that age and come to that conclusion? When we have um, independent ages of, say, about 30 million years for the ashes, and then we find fossils that represent that type of development evolution-wise across the world, that, that makes sense. What do you do when the evidence is before you, you're a scientist, the evidence is before you, and you want to say, well, then this completely goes against my whole upbringing. This completely goes against everything I have known to be true thus far. Can I toss it out the window? That's a struggle I've gone through this year. Where is God? Here, you look at it and tell me. Nathan Baird is a geology major in his final year at Wheaton College in Illinois. I believe we're good to go. This quiet campus is at the eye of a storm, raging over opposing views about how life developed. Wheaton, one of the top 50 schools in America, is committed to exposing its students to the discoveries of science. But as a Christian college, it is also committed to preserving their faith in the God of the Bible. Students here are part of the largest religious group in America, conservative Christians. For them, conflicts between adherence to the Christian faith and the assertions of evolutionary theory are not just political or academic, they are personal. The emotions are very real and uh, they do play into the whole picture, I think, and it's because it's about something that's to do with human beings. It's to do with our very, very souls, our very existence, and that's what makes it so important, I think. So it actually made me faster. Wheaton calls itself a marketplace of ideas. Yeah. But some students inevitably feel threatened as they confront ways of thinking without precedent in the world from which they came. I was definitely, definitely indoctrinated in along, along those lines of this is, this is how Genesis 1 and 2 uh, entails the story of creation and this is how it's got to be. And yes, evolution was portrayed as an evil, you know, it was, it was Satan's doing and it's something that, you know, is, is the demise of the church if we, if we even listen to it. I, as a kid, I had the questions of, well, how did God create the earth? And, uh, you know, well, let's go back to Genesis 1, you know, and let's read the account. And it's, you know, God formed it. Uh, he, he separated the expanses. He, get, he created day and night. But my mind wants to know the details. It wants to know what happened. He's asked difficult questions. Nathan has asked difficult questions. But I think that that's the kind of person he is. He's not uh, willing just to take just what everybody else says or believe it because that's what everybody else believes. I think that he is really the kind of person who wants to get into the nitty gritty and wants to get real, really understand. One thing that I've realized is in talking with my mom and stuff going home, I go home, she says, so what, are you an evolutionist now? And it's, it's, the, it's the great evil. It's the great unknown evil, though. It's not even discussed, and that's what... Um, kind of perturbs me is before I came to Wheaton, one of my mom's friends said, don't let him go there. He's, that's such a liberal school. And at first, when I talked to him on the phone one time, I was a little nervous, and I think I even said to Jim something to the effect that I hope he hadn't, hasn't lost his faith. Long before Wheaton students like Nathan arrive on campus, the most important lesson they have learned is that the Bible is true from the very first word. I think that the reason why our church is growing and our pastor would say the same thing is because he preaches the word of God and that's all he does. He goes uh, line upon line, verse upon verse, um, book by book, and that is the only reason why our church is growing as fast as it is. This world in which we live has convinced us that this, this life is all about our getting what we want when we want it and, and supplying all of our needs so that we can enjoy all of this life. But the Bible tells us very clearly that this life is not about you and me. 
This life that you and I live is all about God. Coming home is a, is a good thing for me because I get to be in much more discussion with my parents and being reminded that, you know, I'm one of four kids. I have a fiance. I have a grandma who I go over and I mow her lawn. I'm not just a person who sits and studies physical chemistry all day. And that's why, for me, it's always been good when at Wheaton um, to call home and to talk to dad and mom or when at home to be in conversation with them. Thank you for these times you've blessed us with as a family. And we just thank you for this time, Lord, and for the beautiful day and that we could have a barbecue family um, time outside this evening, Lord. We thank you for all you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Be with Melissa. And oh. be with my fiance, <laughs> Melissa. Yeah. Yeah. Can I have a little bit of steak? Yeah. I would say Christians in general, and myself included, don't know, don't know anything about evolution. So when we're bashing it or when we're tell it, just dismissing it outright, we're not even understanding what it says. And to me, to understand that God created will never change. No matter how much science discovers, God tells us, and I believe it, that man's wisdom is foolishness. To me, that tells me if, if I don't go and I don't learn, study to become a preacher, then it's foolishness. No, 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 no. no. But and I, I know you're not saying that, but, but, but when you but, say but, man's but, but, wisdom but, but, is foolishness, then why can't a Christian scientist come to the conclusions that evolution is true? We have to define what evolution is. I, I heard a guy say that he hold, holds wholeheartedly to the evolutionary theory um, as the best fit to its data. Um, what does he mean from that? He probably means it started with the Big Bang. Um, and it has to be long. And that's where I would say, no. Why can't God do the Big Bang? And why can't we can God... Be on that. We can be on that. Right. Which day well, did he do it? What's that? Which day did he do it? I'm not, I, I'm not exactly sure this, the whole day stuff is my cup of tea. Maybe yeah. he yelled bang for because, seven days. Uh, and I've, what's that? He yelled Maybe bang? Seven days. I'm not saying science is, is worthless, but if, if, a, if a scientist's goal in life is to pollute, prove that Darwinism is, 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 is the way that we got here, he's going to die a very disappointed man. The thing that I don't necessarily appreciate about the Christian community is um, the dismissal of all things of evolution as being just a natural evil. Um, yeah. And that's how I feel things are taught to students um, mm -hmm. growing up in a Christian school or a Christian church or whatever, is that at the mention of evolution, you run. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's almost ridiculous. And as a scientist, as a Christian, I would like to understand those things, and I would not like to say, oh, well, God just did it. That's not, a, that's not an answer, mm -hmm. one, that holds much for me, or two, that will hold much in the world. Is that, does that frighten you, Mom? No, that doesn't frighten me, because I know he'll have the ability to search it out. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, it doesn't frighten me. But Darwin, as I understand his teaching, maybe I'm wrong, made a direct, direct frontal assault to Genesis 1. And if he is going to say that man evolved from some slimy thing in, in the stream, then I, 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 feel, uh, I feel it's appropriate for me to tell, <coughs> to tell him he's wrong. Because I know, I, I know man didn't. Okay? You because, know man did it, and I don't know if man did or didn't. Okay, then you're saying that we had one slimy thing and he cre created Adam, and another slimy thing created Eve. And but see, from Adam and Eve, that's such a gross, um, gross simplification <laughs> of evolution. I understand, but that's the most important element. But God's they infusion to... of His self and of His spirit into what do you think, Mom? Into, help, help me out here. Into <laughs> humans was a supernatural thing, no matter how we look at it. Yeah. Whether whether. All of a sudden, he picked up dust, and like the Snickers commercial where you used to have peanuts in your hand, you get a Snickers bar, whether it was dust and man, and then God says, Yeah. You know, you're, I'm in you. God, so you're saying God created the elephants and the giraffes and, and created man, looked around and said, which one is that do I think is the best to represent my, my, my nature? And he said, oh, it must be man. So we'll make man intelligent and but give, I, give him the ability to reason see, and to think. I don't know. 